हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल फार्मा ज्ञान फ्रेंड्स इन दिस चैनल यू कैन लर्न अबाउट फार्मास्यूटिकल गाइडलाइंस फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्रियल प्रैक्टिसेस प्रोसेसेस डॉक्यूमेंटेशन प्रैक्टिसेस एंड मेनी मोर अबाउट फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्रीज फ्रेंड्स प्लीज डोंट फॉरगेट टू लाइक सब्सक्राइब एंड शेयर माई चैनल फार्मा ज्ञान एंड प्रेस वेल आइकॉन गिवन इन बॉटम राइट कॉर्नर टू गेट लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स डायरेक्टली इन योर नोटिफिकेशन पैनल वेन आई अपलोड न्यू वीडियोज So next we will discuss about the BDO swap limits if homogeneous distribution is assumed on all surfaces a recommended value can be set for the content in a swap the maximum allowable carryover from one batch to another can be established based on for example ADE NOAA or TDD see above if the total direct contact surface is known the target value for contamination per square meter can be calculated according equation 4.2.5i this can be used as basic information for preparation of a method of analysis and detection limit equation 4.2.5i target value g forward slash dm2 equals Also other methods with different swab limits for different surfaces in a piece of equipment and forward slash or equipment train can be used. If the equipment can be divided in several parts, different swab limits may be taken for the different parts building up the equipment train. If the result of one part is exceeding the target value, the whole equipment train may still be within the MACO limit. The carryover is then calculated according equation 4.2.5-2, see below. Swab limits, continued. During equipment qualification and cleaning validation hard to clean parts can be determined. Rather than declaring the hard to clean part as the worst case swab limit for the whole equipment train, it could be separated and dealt with as mentioned above. It should be noted that different types of surfaces, for example stainless steel, glass lined, teflon, may show different recoveries during swabbing. In those cases it may be beneficial to divide the equipment train in several parts, and combine the results in a table or matrix. The total calculated amount should be below the MAKO and the individual swab results should not exceed the maximum expected residues established during cleaning validation forward slash equipment qualification. Recovery studies and method validation are necessary when applying swabbing as a method to determine residues. Equation 4.2.5-2 equals DM Co true, measured, total quantity of substance possible carryover on the clean surface in contact with the product calculated from results of swab tests re area for the tested piece of equipment hash i me quantity in g forward slash dm2 for each swab per area of swabbed surface normally 1 dm2 setting acceptance criteria for swab limits for each item tested the following acceptance criteria AC, apply. AC1. The cleaning result of an individual part should not exceed the maximum expected residue. AC2. For the total equipment train the MAKO must not be exceeded. In determining acceptance limits, all possible cases of following products in the relevant equipment shall be taken into account. It is proposed that a matrix be set up in which the limits for all cases are calculated. Either acceptance criteria for each product in the equipment can be prepared or the worst case of all product combinations may be selected. Evaluation of results. When all surfaces have been sampled and the samples have been analyzed, the results are compared to the acceptance criteria. Companies may find it easier to evaluate against the MAKO. However, it is advisable to have a policy for swab limit as well. Especially because analytical methods are validated within a certain range for swab results. Another reason is that some pieces could be very contaminated, and it is not good practice to clean certain pieces very thoroughly in order to let others be dirty. 
Thus, limits for both Mako and swabs should be set. Rinse limit. The residue amount in equipment after cleaning can also be determined by taking rinse samples. During equipment qualification it should be established that all direct content parts of the equipment is wetted forward slash reached by the rinsing solvent. After the last cleaning cycle, last rinse, the equipment should be assessed as clean. In some cases it may be advisable to dry the equipment in order to do a proper assessment. Thereafter, the rinse cycle can be executed, and a sample taken, sampling rinse. The procedure for the rinse cycle and sampling should be well established and described to assure repeatability and comparability, cycle times, temperatures, volumes, etc. The choice of the rinse solvent should be established during cleaning validation, taking into account solubility of the contaminations, and reactivity of the rinse solvent towards the contaminants, saponification, hydrolysis, etc. Method validation is needed. In a worst case approach, the amount of the residue in the equipment can be assumed to be equal to the amount determined by analysis of the rinse sample. This can be supported by rinse studies that show a strong decay of a residue in a piece of equipment. The MAKO is usually calculated on each individual product change over scenario according to the procedures outlined above and individual acceptance criteria are established using the following equation. Rinse limit, continued. For quantitation a solvent sample, for example 1L, is taken. The residue in the sample is determined by a suitable analytical method and the residue in the whole equipment is calculated according to the following equation. M equals V asterisk, CCB. M, amount of residue in the cleaned equipment in MG. V, volume of the last rinse or wash solvent portion in L. C, concentration of impurities in the sample in MG forward slash L. CB. Blank of the cleaning or rinsing solvent in MG forward slash L. If several samples are taken during one run, one and the same blank can be used for all samples provided the same solvent lot was used for the whole run. Requirement, M target value. The requirement is that M target value. If needed, the sample can be concentrated before analysis. The choice for swab or rinse sampling usually depends on the type of equipment. Areas to be swabbed are determined during equipment and cleaning validation, hard to clean areas, and are preferably readily accessible for operational reasons, for example near the manhole. If swabbing of the indicated area is not easy, rinse sampling is the alternative. The advantage is that the whole surface of the equipment is sampled for contamination, being provided that during equipment qualification, surface wetting testing was taken into account. Thus equipment used for milling, mixing, filters, etc. are usually swabbed, whilst reactor systems are usually sampled by rinsing. Rationale for the use of different limits in pharmaceutical and chemical production. Unlike in pharmaceutical production, where residues on the surface of equipment may be 100% carried over to the next product, in API production the carryover risk is much lower for technical and chemical manufacturing reasons. Thus higher limits may be acceptable in chemical production compared to pharmaceutical production. For example chemical processing steps often include dissolution extraction and filtration steps that are likely to reduce significantly any residue left from previous production and cleaning operations. A factor of 5 to 10 could be applied to the MAKO calculated using the acceptable daily exposure limit or the secondary criteria defined in the previous sections. In all cases, the limits should be justified by a competent chemist with detailed knowledge about the equipment and the chemical processes, following quality risk management principles and the limits should be approved by operations and quality assurance managers. 
The following description shows an example where the carryover risk for a residue in chemical production equipment is much lower than in pharmaceutical production equipment. Assuming that the common criteria, ADE, PDE, 1 forward slash 1000 TH dose, LD50 Noel forward slash AD with SF100 to 1000, 10 ppm, represent the state of the art for pharmaceutical production and are considered sufficiently safe, then the calculation of limits in API manufacture must reflect the different processes in pharmaceutical production and in the chemical production of active pharmaceutical ingredients to allow comparable risk analyses to be undertaken. Pharmaceutical production chemical production physical process. In pharmaceutical production a residue remaining on the surface of equipment after cleaning is, in the next production cycle, distributed in a mixture of active substance and excipients if it does not remain on the surface. In the worst case it will be 100% transferred to the first batch of next product. Chemical production forward slash processing. In chemical production a 100% carryover of residue from the equipment surface to the next product to be manufactured is very unlikely based on the way the process is run and on technical considerations. The residue remaining on the equipment surface can, during the next production cycle, be carried over into the reaction mixture consisting of solvent and raw materials. In most cases, however, any residue in solution will be eliminated from the process together with the solvent, and insoluble residue by physical separation processes, for example filtration, so likely carryover into the end product will be low. The final step in a multi-step chemical synthesis is selective purification of the API, for example by crystallization during which contaminants are removed from the process and forward slash or insoluble residues are removed by physical separation. From the original reaction mixture of adduct, agent and solvent there remains only a fraction of the original mass as API at the end of the chemical process. Chemical production forward slash processing, continued. It is also to be noted that, during subsequent pharmaceutical production, the API is further diluted through the excipients that are added. Chemical production physical processes, drying, mixing, filling. Apparatus and equipment that is used for physical end treatments such as drying. Mixing or milling may either be operated together with the previous synthesis equipment or generally be used separately. During separate physical end treatments of APIs, there is no decrease of contaminants compared to the aforementioned chemical process. Consequently, we recommend in this case that the calculation methods applied should be those normally used in pharmaceutical production, ADE. PDE 1 forward slash 1000 TH dose, LD 50 Noel forward slash dot D dot E with SF 100 to 1000, 10 ppm. The limits for carryover into the final API should be the same as those calculated in the previous sections.